In this video, I'm going to show you how to design furniture in SketchUp. This is a sofa table that I've already modeled. We're going to repeat the process. So this is a sofa table with a couple of drawers, face frame and shelf down below. That's already been modeled. And we'll take you through the process and show you how to create an exploded view, pull the dimensions off for what they call takeoffs, and then how to get that into a cut list optimizer tool. So before we do that, I would like to share my website, which is cranecabinets.com. That's crane with a Y. We make some beautiful furniture. We also do plans and more. So I build a number of custom pieces for local customers, meaning Southeast Michigan in the US of A. I also sell online build plans for shop projects as well as furniture projects. I offer design services for those that need some help with things like SketchUp or Cutlist Optimizer. They have folks that want to build, not design. And also I have a special collection of videos for beginning woodworkers to help new people along. End of commercial. So let's go into the sketch. Let's go into what the customer specifications are here. They want a sofa table, uh, two drawers and a shelf as stated, 48 inches high, 48 inches wide, 18 inches deep with a one inch thick top. So SketchUp has a free version. They have a few different versions, but this is the free one that I'm going to show. It's on the web only. You can discover 3D modeling, and I found it to be pretty useful for most everything that I'm doing. There are upgrades available, and of course they try to get you going in that direction. So back to SketchUp and back to that ISO view that we just had. And now I'm going to hide this select I'm doing that by clicking and then making a square to the left that selects everything within and behind that rectangle right click and I will hide that information now scooch over a little bit by pushing down on my scroll wheel and if I do scroll wheel and my shift key I can slide around now I'm going to Press the R key on my keyboard, get it close to that origin here, click once, and then drag I'm not, my fingers off the button. In the bottom right corner, you can see some numbers. I'm going to just type in now 48 comma 18. This will give me that rectangle for the overall size. Hit the space bar to get rid of the rectangle tool. Left click once in the center to choose that surface. Press P on the keyboard for push. Click once and then drag up, upward. Again, the numbers in the bottom right corner. And I want it to be 40, let's say 47 inches tall. Oh, 487. Control Z is back. <laughs> Again, 47. That's a little better. Spacebar to get rid of that tool. Grab my scroll wheel and rotate. Now, now this is still just a collection of lines and planes. So if I triple click this, then right click and make component, and we'll call this box two. Now when I click on places on this, it's more like a solid, but not really. Now, choose the rectangle tool again. Let's go to the top corner, release, bottom corner, click again, spacebar, select that plane, P, up, click once, go up, type the number one for one inch, hit spacebar to get rid of that, triple click, right click, make component, this will be top, Two. Yes, this is my second take. Now we'll make a leg 
and we'll press R and go down about here and you can see in the bottom right corner we're at 0 comma 47 I want it to be over this way 1.5 comma 47 all right spacebar select that plane press P push that thing 1.5 right hit enter spacebar triple click sometimes it's hard to get all of them come on there I did get them all right click make a component leg two and now I don't think I need this box anymore so click on the box and hit delete goodbye grab my scroll wheel and let's rotate up and under and now I want to put those legs one inch inset from the edges of the top so I'm going to use my T tool T is for tape measure grab the edge click once drag in the general direction numbers in the bottom right corner I want one inch enter one hit enter I have a one inch guideline offset from that surface repeat over here one enter click one enter click drag one enter spacebar to get rid of that guy click on the leg and I'm going to now click the M key on the keyboard M is for move I'm going to grab that back corner of that leg and I'm just going to move my mouse over until it says intersection click again I'll rotate around and you can see how nicely that corner put itself into place SketchUp is really good at helping you along the way usually it's quite useful now still got that one selected I'm gonna do control whoops control C and then control V where that was a copy paste grab this guy he's too tall have to click and drag him down 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 come on all right sometimes they jump around on you again it's helping you and for move click on that corner and bring it under and to that intersection bing zoom out a little bit and control v to get another leg clicking on that front corner until we hit the intersection control V grab that back corner to the intersection hit spacebar to release and voila there's four legs spread out now I'm going to select those guides and delete them because they really just get in the way and I don't need them anymore now let's make a side for this and I'm going to zoom in here to this point and I want to click the R click once drag it over to that other opposing corner and then down and you're gonna see some numbers in the bottom right corner again something comma 13 I want this to be 20 inches comma 13 wide now this will be the side click on that surface Let's click it from the other side. It's a little more intuitive. Hit P, click and pull that three quarters of an inch. That'll be made with three quarter inch plywood. Hit space, triple click, right click, make component, side two. And we can, while we're at it, copy, paste, grab this corner and stick it on the end point of the leg. So look at that. We're making furniture, Mom. Okay, now next step, let's put a face frame on this. I'm going to hit R for rectangle again, my favorite. And we'll go to that end point down to
this endpoint now. Did I just make a mistake? I did. Now look at that. See how that rectangle is cocked? That is not the rectangle I want. So Control Z goes back and let's try again to make sure we grab from this corner down to this corner. That's terrible. Control Z. What is going on here? There to there. Space. Click. Push, bring it forward three quarters of an inch. And what did I make? I really just made a back panel. So let's triple click that. Let's make this a back panel, back two. And let's move it so that this corner is. corner goes in that endpoint of side two. Scroll around and you can see it looks pretty good. All right, so there's our back panel. Wasn't ready for that, but guess what? Too bad. Now let's do a, let's do the face frame. So from that point downward to here with the rectangle tool and over out in space, I want the face frame to be 1.5 wide space click p pull it forward three quarters of an inch thick that is triple click make component that is our style two and we want to copy that control c control v Well, no, no, just forget the man behind the curtain there. All right, we want this corner here to match. No, we don't. All right, let's do something. Let's uh, rotate up, selected that top, right click and hide because it's sort of in the way right now. I'm going to grab that style, click M for move and bring it right to where I want it. Now then let's put the top rail on. So rectangle back corner to back corner. And yes, you can rotate while you're doing this. And down one and a half, so it's 40 inches. So we want 40 comma 1.5. That's the back surface of that pull Click and pull that forward three quarters of an inch. Triple click, right click, make component rail two. We want two of those. So control C, control V. Look at that, clicked it right in place. might have hurt myself. All right, so let's what's the measurement from here to here, 17 inches. So I want to go hard math here. Let me pull up the calculator. So 17 minus 1.5 15 and a half divided by two, anybody? Seven and three quarters. So on the model, I want to go 7.75. From the bottom, seven, stop that, T. When it's not behaving, when it's trying to help you too much, sometimes you just hit the, uh, the space bar to clear that and it will stop helping you. And you can try again, seven and three quarters. So looky there, the difference between those two is one and a half, voila. Now let's make a rectangle for this. The intersection, space, P, push it backward this time, three quarters of an inch, space, 
triple click, right click, make component. No. We're going to make the same thing, aren't we? Let's control Z those parts and just grab one of these. Space. Control CV. Grab that corner and put it right there. So we really only have a rail and I'm going to get rid of those guides. Now we want two drawers in this and a shelf. So let's figure out from here to here. What do we have? 40 inches. Okay, back to the calculator. And we'll put in 40 minus 1.5 and then divide that by 2 19 and a quarter back to the model uh, control Z T one nine point two five and from this side one nine point two five it was already helping me now let's make a rectangle and go from point to point create that center style click on the surface P to push it backwards three quarters of an inch space triple click right click and this will be style center two and look at that now we'll get rid of those guidelines start to take shape now mm -hmm. let's throw the bottom in while we can see things from the bottom so the bottom will fit to the inside so click R and go point to point. Now we've got our little surface plane here. Rotate it back, space, P, pull up. I'll just use three quarter inch just to be consistent. Space, triple click, and make component bottom two. So now we need to sort out drawer boxes, which is a whole other fun thing. And that's probably too much for right now. Let's choose to see our hidden geometry. So if I go back to display display and choose to see hidden objects you can see our old top that we hid I can select that space select it right click it and unhide it as well as all the garbage behind so now we'll just uncheck the box for hidden objects and there you can see the rough outline of our sofa table and I think I'm going to stop there because we're going on 18 minutes already. Now, it's important to save this. The first time you'll need to give it a name, that kind of stuff. You can select everything, Control C, Control V. Then I like to throw that stuff out in space somewhere. Oh, let's back up. Let's go back to a nice view of this. And let's say you'd like to come back to this view, but you don't have to go through all this rigmarole. So in what's called scenes on the right side here, you can create an ISO, you can add, add a scene. I'll just add one and I will call it ISO 2. And now hit space if I want to go to an exploded the old exploded view and I want to come back to the ISO 2 view that we just created that is here now we just created this guy this copy that we're gonna explode 
And while we're here, let's create a scene called, add a scene and we'll call it exploded two. So we can come back to this view anytime we want. I'm going to click off of those parts, rotate it a little, and now we're going to explode this thing. Press M, drag it back, space, M, drag it over, try to keep things on the axis, click, M, move. I think I just broke my own rule there. Click, M, move. Let's just select the whole face frame at once by holding the shift key down as I select these individual parts. I'll show you another one here in a second. I want to keep that together, right click it, and I'm going to make it a group. So now even if I click off of it, when I click onto it, I get the whole set. Oop. I didn't include that center style. Let's collect, select that as well. Make it a bigger group. Move that big group off a little bit. Did I? What happened to him? He got lost. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, we got some lost geometry. That's not good. Select everything. Can hold control. Hold control and unclick the back panel. And I'm going to delete that because I'm not sure what happened there. Funny things happened in this one. All right, so back to that exploded two. Now let's put some labels on some things. I'm going to go over to the tape measure tool because I can't remember how else to find it. And there is a text tool. And I'm going to click on the face of top two and just click again. It'll automatically put in the name of the part. Click, click. I got a little hidden. Click, click. I won't bother to do all this stuff. Click, click. We're just going to grab the plywood pieces for fun now and do some dimensioning. So back to here. But now we want to select dimensions. Now this tends to find points. They have to be physical points on the geometry. And I'll click that endpoint and go to this endpoint and bring it out that way, 48. I'll grab an opposite corner, click, click. There's our 48 by 18 top. And one more for the thickness. Come on, let go. There. Now this one does a funny thing, right? It's really hard to see that, but if I right click that, and go to text position, I can go outside, instead of being centered, either outside the start or outside the end. And that usually helps, didn't seem to take here. Come on, stop it. Right click, text position. Oh, you're gonna make me crazy. Outside the start, and that's not working. Last chance, buddy. We'll do it outside the end. That seemed to make it more happy. I can always just go back to Exploded 2 to bring myself back to that same spot. And we can continue to dimension the plywood pieces from the back corner to the back corner. That was wrong. Escape. Space. I want to dimension... Dimension this guy from this point to this point and drag it up. That's 13 inches. That sounds familiar. And from this point down to this point, 13 by 20 for our sides. That sounds right. Moving this in. Back corner. Back corner. I don't know why I'm doing back corners, but 43. And... See, now that's grabbing the previous dimension. I don't want that. That's why I usually try to go to an opposite corner. Again, it's helping me. 43 by 20. And then our bottom is 43 by, 
opposite corner 13. Hit space and I'll back out to exploded 2 again. There's our plywood pieces. Let's hit save after that incredible accomplishment. Now I'm going to go into another place called cutlistoptimizer.com and it remembers me because I already have an account etc. Let's just start with a new blank project. Uh, let me save this one first. Not too important. New blank project and remember any of our links? It was about 20 by 13, 2. I have to add a material here and we'll put in a sheet of plywood 96 by 48. Hopefully just one of those and in material we're going to add new. Uh, I'll just call it three quarter ply. And the grain direction on this is along the length. So we just created a side. This material is three quarter inch plywood. And here we're going to call this a side two. And we want the grain direction on this to be up and down. So along the length, in this case, the longer dimension. I'm going to pull this out and move it over so we can do something and see both at the same time. Now, next panel, let's do the back. So that is 43 long by 20. Okay, now I can't do my stop this. No, no, no. Full screen. That was crazy. And if this wipes me out, I'm going to be so upset. Looks like I'm still okay. Alright, 43 by 20. And we need one of those. It's still on a three quarter inch plywood. And this will be back to one more to go on our bottom. It is 43 by 13. One of those three quarter ply bottom. Uh, we want the grain to be actually along the width of these. So up and down on the piece. And you know what, let's just make this top out of three quarter inch plywood just to have a little bit more to play with. That's 48 by 18. Let's say it's an edge wrapped, edge banded top out of plywood. Three quarter inch ply, we'll call this top two. And we want the grain to definitely go along the length of this one. Now, list optimizer what does this thing do let's take this and calculate what this does is it tries to lay out your pieces on that sheet of plywood and give you a cut plan which is really cool so I define my kerf thickness or my cut or my blade thickness as a half an inch just to give me some buffer and you can see that this fit quite nicely the back, the bottom, the sides, and the top. And give me a nice chunk of scrap, continuous chunk of scrap that I can use for other projects. And I could choose to save this and do some other stuff. But you can see how fast I just got myself a cut plan. Let's save this as sofa table. So for table two, and now over on the right side, we can export this to a PDF. So for table two, so for table two, and whatever other additional text you might want to put in here, like copyright, it's always a good idea. It's your intellectual property, might as well keep track of it. 
and then this generates a PDF file that you can save and print and take out into the shop with you. And where did it go? It's down here in the bottom left. You can open that and see that's a PDF file that you can then print or save or do whatever you like to do with it. It's yours to keep. Sorry this was so long, but gave you a quick overview of how to use SketchUp, the free version, as well as Cut List Optimizer and Design Furniture. Please give me a like and a subscribe if you like this kind of material. And please do visit cranecabinets.com for other stuff like this. Thank you.